Welcome. You have volunteered to do work with children at a program at Westminster. We have a child protection policy in effect and you have agreed to follow it. We have prepared this slideshow to acquaint and train you in its implementation. It should take no more than 15 minutes to complete. We are a trusting, welcoming, and forgiving church family. But when our children's safety is the subject, we are very protective. We want people in our community to understand more about child abuse and how to recognize, prevent, and respond to it, especially when working with children here. Thank you for volunteering to work with a children's program at our church. When they are in programs in this place, we are all committed to ensure their safety. We can all agree that child abuse is a problem and that we must work together to prevent it. It's helpful to know a bit about how great a problem it is. There are many sources that track statistics about abuse. According to U.S. Health and Human Services data, there were over 700,000 victims of child abuse in the United States in 2014. That figure includes 1,580 fatalities. The annual rate hovers near 10% of all children in the nation. 19% of reporters in 2014 were non-professionals. Oregon has a child abuse and neglect rate nearly one-third above the national average. In Marion County in 2015, there were over 10,000 children who suffered child abuse. There were over 27,000 investigations in this county alone. What are the categories of child abuse? The first is physical abuse which is deliberately and intentionally causing bodily harm to a child. The critical element is that this abuse is not done by accident. The, sec the second type is sexual abuse, which is generally considered to be physical contact between an adult and a child, including fondling and also can mean showing or involving a child in making a por pornographic material or in prostitution. It may also include an ongoing pattern of sexual talk or exposure to sexual material inappropriate for the child's age. The next category, emotional abuse, is more challenging to legally define, but generally involves behaviors that bring emotional harm to a child. It may include terrifying or humiliating punishments, isolating a child away from others, exploiting a child, or repeatedly insulting and humiliating a child. The last category, neglect, can involve a variety of dimensions. Emotional neglect includes the failure to provide the love, nurture, and availability that children need. Physical neglect is failure to provide the basic needs of food, clothing appropriate to the weather, and shelter, or exposing a child to dangerous situations, such as allowing them to play near a busy highway unsupervised, or exposing them to violence, such as domestic violence or to drugs. Medical neglect involves failure to obtain needed medical care. The final dimension is educational neglect, in which parents do not ensure that the child goes to school or learns in some other way the basic material required by state law. Abuse is usually done by someone the child knows and trusts and who has access to the child. It is most often a parent or relative, but can also involve both acquaintances and occasionally strangers. Now that we know what abuse is and that abusers are usually known by the child, how can we protect them while they're in our care? We must stay alert. The risk for abuse increases when children are alone somewhere and an abuser takes advantage of the situation. Taking a single child into a bathroom, for instance, is risky. Any setting involving an adult alone with a child away from others is risky. If no one is taking responsibility for the actions of those supervising children and making sure that policies regarding supervision are followed, there is greater risk for abuse to occur. Abusers watch for such opportunities. People with power, authority, influence, and control over a child are more able to use these advantages to abuse a child. Parents, who are the most frequent abusers, coaches who have certainly been in the news, likewise priests and teachers, all are in positions of authority and control over children. This combined with access to children in many settings leaves many children vulnerable.
it. Okay. Okay. Ready, go. If there is a difference in age and or cognitive ability, risk is greatly increased. We must be especially watchful and protective of the youngest and most vulnerable in our care. Grooming is when an abuser takes days, weeks, or even months to increase access to a victim. Its purpose is to desensitize the child and his or her family or even staff and volunteers at community programs for children to behaviors that would otherwise raise red flags of distrust. Grooming is purposeful and calculated in order to set up the child and even sometimes the entire family or staff at a program the child may attend for abuse. The abuser will study and befriend the targeted child, learning what the child likes and dislikes and build a relationship with him or her. Offenders will identify vulnerabilities and then will exploit them. Be alert. Abusers carefully plan their access to victims so that they won't be caught or so that victims won't be believed if they report abuse. Follow procedures for proper supervision of children in your care. Don't give abusers the chance to gain access to victims. The abuser doesn't want the victim to report offensive behavior and thus get caught. The abuser also works with the family to gain unquestioning trust so that if the victim reports a problem, the family will be disinclined to believe it. It is our responsibility to keep children safe. We must all understand the facts about abuse in order to recognize it, prevent it, and stop it when we see it. It's a community responsibility. Watch for potential problems whenever you are with the children. Follow procedures for supervising children who are in your care. When unexpected things come up, Think about how to avoid giving a predator access to children. Remember the points made in the risk increases section of this presentation. Minimize the opportunities for abuse to happen. Follow procedures and think creatively when necessary. The next series of slides will detail a few basic policies our church has laid out to protect our children. You will need to abide by them when working with children in our church. Know what child abuse is and how we can safeguard against it while children are in our care. Be trained. That's what you are doing now. Two adults should always be present when supervising children. They should not be related to each other. In the rare circumstance when one of those adults must leave to take care of an emergency, the rule of three may be used. For example, one adult may be in the classroom with two or more children for a short period of time. If an emergency arises where you are left alone with a single child, go together to a place where you can be with others. If you are unexpectedly caught by yourself with a group of children, ask the adults in an adjacent room to help you out. Open the door between your rooms or go join the other group or invite others to join your group until things can be resolved. If you must meet individually with a child, find a visible place to do it. Go to the Narthex or Boulder Hall, someplace like that. Bathroom use is obviously an area for special care with supervision. Encourage parents of younger children to make sure their child has taken care of bathroom needs before leaving them with you. Depending on the age, children may go to bathrooms on their own or may go with a child buddy. If adults go, they will supervise from the outer doors with the door open. Adults rotate bathroom supervision turns, so no single adult is always the one to take children there. If assistance is needed, do so with this outer door open and with another adult present if at all possible. This is to protect you as well as the children. In addition to the main bathrooms and the narthex, there is a bathroom in the basement area between the large room and the preschool room. It is only for children to use as needed. Adults monitor this bathroom with the outer door closed since there is no privacy screen. 
To the left of the stairs going down from the narthex is a hall with some bathrooms in it. These are for adult use only. Hugs are the reward for serving children, but there is a caveat to protect you and the children. Let the children initiate the hugging. Adults working with children and youth use appropriate modern discipline strategies focused on positivity using methods based on mutual respect. Spanking, hitting, grabbing, shaking, or use of any kind of physical discipline is not allowed. Physical restraint should only be used in a situation where it is necessary to prevent a child from physically harming him or herself or another individual. Get extra help if possible if you must use physical restraint so you have extra eyes on what is happening. You'll want to protect yourself as well as any children involved. Before your campers arrive, locate the first aid kits in the areas where you will be working. Look at the contents with your coworkers so you know what you have available should the need arise. Find out who, if any, has a current first aid card. Those people will take the lead in any serious incident. In your packet, you will have directions telling you about procedures for reporting any abuse that you might see during your service here, as well as what to do if a child tells you about abuse they have experienced outside this church. Please read about what to do so you will be prepared. As we all know, working with children is full of unexpected turns. You might be the one person a child chooses to tell about disturbing things that have happened to him or her. You don't have to decide whether it's true or not. Others more trained than you will make that decision. Be careful not to ask leading questions. Don't be afraid to report. Before you volunteer, you will have to complete some paperwork, some of which you may have already done. One, view this presentation, then answer some questions, which are located via an online link where you registered your child for this camp, or you may request an email link. Two, read the church child and youth protection policy and sign and date the commitment form that goes with it. Three, complete the volunteer application form, also available on the camp website. It's all about knowing what to watch for, staying alert, and working together to keep our children safe. Thank you for watching this slideshow.